Take a drive through Ellendale and you'll see a town that prides itself on appearance. The gym at Ellendale High School is one of few places that didn't seem to fit the mold. And looks weren't the only reason many thought it was time for a new facility. The lighting was kind of b below average and like it was really hot in there all the time so you were just sweating and it was gross. It had seen its age, I mean it had been around a long time and it didn't meet the needs of a modern uh, athletic facility, educational facility. The biggest why was there was only one and we've got quite a number of teams going on and practicing and, and uh, we look at in the fall of the season we got um, you know, your varsity or junior high or elementary sports going on and, and, and in the winter time same type of a scenario the biggest why was there was only one. With so many reasons to look beyond the old gym it's no surprise that something new was called for by the school and city leadership. That said, the school in town decided to build a gymnasium that visually reflected the character that those in Ellendale wanted to see every day and show visitors to this town in southern North Dakota. Ellendale Superintendent Jeff Fosnott explained some of the long process and the support that came in getting this facility off the ground. It was in the fall of 2009 we held our first what we call a public input meeting for facilities. At that point was the question of what do you think we need, what are some areas of concern, what, you know, we came out that time with needing to work on our elementary school, this facility came out of that, other options came out, and uh, so it's just been a fury of activity since then. Long before the money was there, Athletic Director Matt Herman was already looking for the things he would want in a new gym. When I came to Ellendale and I noticed fairly new facilities, I mean I can think of Milner, I can think of Foreman. Uh, the second gym in Oaks and, and I started taking notice of what features I saw in those other facilities that I thought worked well, so what things I didn't feel work well. There was a, an informal note taking going on a long time about the facilities or the, the features that I'd like to see based on what I saw in, in other newer facilities. Those two worked together and with a slew of others to make this idea become a reality. There was a window of economic opportunity and the citizens voted overwhelmingly in support of the facility. I remember those very well. There was too much, uh, too much anxiety with those type of votes not to remember. I mean, when you're, when you're uh, putting that much time and energy into trying to convey the board's desires that this is where they want to go and, and the community's desires is where you want to go, at least you believe it is, and then you, uh, the newspaper articles, the information that people ask for, the, the concerns with taxes and what's going to happen, I mean, yeah, you, there's just a lot of time and energy put into it. So the night that the vote went off, that whole day, um, we were very keen. We were watching. You know, we wanted to know who was in and how it was progressing. And, and that night when the vote was tallied and came through, it was just, just overwhelming because the 86% uh, said yes. I mean, it was just, words couldn't, couldn't describe it because it was just more than we ever projected. With the approval on the books, the work began. Work that would take almost a year to complete and a total cost of more than $4.5 million. Every detail of the gym and the amenities was considered as the construction was going full swing. I'm sure from the outside's perspective, uh, someone uh, you know, just watching it from the street, there wasn't many changes, it didn't seem to change. You know, what, what happened, happened. But from where Mr. Herman and I were on the inside, meeting with contractors daily, architects weekly, it seemed like the changes were fast and furious. It didn't seem like there was a day that went by that there wasn't some change. A lot of them were very minimal. You probably wouldn't notice them. Some were much larger. I know we had a great team of people. I mean, between our architect, our general contractor, Gary Mertz, our project manager, my admin team, coaches, just really stepped up, made really sound decisions. And you can get pretty good style for the same as you can for a wall that's functional. I mean, if you just kind of pick it right. But I remember picking the, the colors to the floor, and that was an early, early decision, well before we even had any walls up or anything. And we really said, boy, we want to set ourselves apart. We want to be someone, when you walk in our gym, wow, that's amazing. And when you see that floor and that little bit of stain that's on there, you see more of it now. But at that time we picked it, you didn't see much of it. And our philosophy at that point, because Mr. Herman and I went to Minneapolis to pick it out, was you put $130,000 worth of maple on the floor and it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful, and then you paint it. And then you cover it with paint, you never get to see the beauty of the wood. And when the, when the contractor said, hey, I think we could stain it, and it's really great, great technique, it was just instantly we fell in love with it. Because we just think, well, like the, 
the class of that and the quality of that and, and to see the character that was. You talk about the walls, the one behind me, you know, it's just, yeah, it's just the little things. It's just the design, the color, to tie it all together, um, the, the tile on the floor, the mascot on the floor, just all the little things to make sure it, it just kind of every little piece fits. Yeah. And some of the areas outside the gym needed funds beyond what was voted on. The training room is it's phenomenal, I think, just to have that space, to dedicate that space, to get a chance to, to put a kid on a taping table when you want to tape rather than bend over the end of the bleachers. Um, along with the training room, there's a coach's office in there where we've got the video capabilities in there to, to dub tapes and to record. And, and uh, it, it's just a good tool, a good space that it doesn't have to take place in somebody's classroom. We wanted to do something that was just a little bit unique, just to set it apart. So when someone came in and they said, wow, this is just neat. But it really wasn't an expensive alternate, is some of the ceiling uh, tiles that we have in this entryway. We decided to do a little architectural uh, lighting above each of the gym entryway doors, not necessarily for athletic events, we thought, but if you have a, a drama event, a, a theatrical event, it kind of looks like a theater when you walk in, it has a little like, theater feel. And we wanted to cast a little bit of a special treatment on the floor where we put our cardinal in the, in the lobby. So it kind of gives a little uh, showcase to, hey, you're in Ellendale. And this is kind of, this is cardinal territory now. Another one was the press box. The press box was, you know, I'm the kind of quasi-tech guy too, so I like that stuff. But we really, really enjoy having the press box. It allows a place for you back to come in, broadcast. It allows a place for us to broadcast our games out here to the lobby and the locker rooms and those places. It allows us to sit, be up there and, and do audio broadcasts of the games, to put radio there. I mean, the first night that we had this, the cowbell here, and we have you guys here broadcasting, we have radio here broadcasting uh, during district tournament. We have two radio stations here, and we can accommodate all of because of that press box. One of the things that the public doesn't often see is, is we have got our own officials locker room. You know, quite often you go to places and, and I, I used to officiate, so some of the accommodations in some places just were very substandard, and, and Jeff still currently does officiate, and, and having the space for officials kind of developed by a current and former official, just keeping them in mind, you know, they don't have to change in the coach's office, so you don't have the potential for you know, if, if you got a heated battle after a game, you don't have the coaches and the officials sharing the same space right, imme right immediately after the game. As the project began to near an end, people were banging on the gates to get a look. We just saw people at the window, at the glass. I mean, that's a perfect example where people are just plastered to the window, looking in, just wanting to see what it was like. And we, we tried several times at the end of the year to open it up and let people come in and see it. And I, I think it was even parent-teacher conferences last spring. This place was almost done and just kind of cordoning off areas so people could come in because they were just at the door wanting to get in and look at it. Beck Sports was there the night the gym made its sporting debut. The first night it was crazy. I've never seen so many people at a high school game and it was it was a lot of pressure to play good but I mean it made it more fun because the crowd was into it. It was louder. It was it was easier to play into it. Boom! Big time block from Lucinda Stoppelworth. Oh, it was special. You know the anticipation for for Quite a few, it was the first time many had laid eyes on it. Uh, you guys were here and did the broadcast. I know that helped build the specialness of the occasion. Um, you know, it was just, it was nice. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about it. It was a good feeling. The feedback has continued to be positive. It's awesome. I think we've got the best facility in the area. They're very happy. Um, um, officials have been happy that we thought about them. Um, uh, the locker room facilities are good. I think our, our coaches have been appreciative of that, and, and um, it's it, your media has has been appreciative of the accommodations, and, and uh, uh, it's all been positive. The new facility has also continued to push for District Five to host more of its own events instead of playing them at the neutral site in Jamestown. You know, Class B term is glad. We're we're very glad to have it in Class B town. Just people, thank you for hosting, thank you for doing a great job, love the facility, but I, even beyond the facility, I think it was just the Class B nature. It was all the people that from taking tickets to the concession stand to the, the team hosts that just gave it that, that warm, small town, Class B town type uh, 
type feeling, and I think that's what people appreciated more. The folks in Ellendale have shown their cardinal and overall civic pride with the new gym at the school. We hope you enjoyed our look at this facility, but the best way to see it is in person. Hopefully you'll do that. For the Beck Sports Network, I'm John Haddon.